Hello, Vigit Spaghetti, and welcome back to my channel. My name, of course, is Evan Edinger, and I am living in Berlin at the moment. And I asked you guys last week, what questions do you have? And I will answer them in an old school style Q&A, just a chill one. Obviously, the first question you're probably asking right now is, Evan, why do you have a mustache? I just thought it'd be fun. Same reason why I have long hair now. I just thought it'd be fun. Sometimes things aren't that deep. But the first actual question you guys asked on the old Insta was, which German stereotype did you find to be true? So this one isn't necessarily a German stereotype as much as a Berlin stereotype. I've heard that Berliners are very rude, very grumpy people. And you know what? I've heard this stereotype about Londoners, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's true. I think it's just when people from outside try and do things that are wrong, that are touristy, and they don't get out of the way, then some people might come off as rude in London. And I thought maybe it'd be a very similar system in Germany, in Berlin. Oh no. <laughs> well, now I'm actually the new guy coming in. But man, they, they have a stereotype in Britain. British people love to queue. They respect the queue. There is order to this world and they respect it. And so when you stand, you move to the side, people get off of the train, you get onto the train. It works. In Berlin, I thought we were all under the same covenant, the same rule unspoken that, you know, you stand to the side, the doors open, everyone gets off the train for the U-Bahn, and then you get on. Oh no, I'll have a nice place just stood there. And as soon as the train, like some German man goes, ha, huh? and he could, he could just hear the sound of a train coming. My man is pushing in front of me. I'm like, there's, there's not even much space. Like I'm clearly standing here waiting for the train and they will push in front just to make sure they get on, even if it's not even that busy. So I just find that Germans, despite the fact they love their rules and they're very methodical and they're timely, supposedly, when it comes to the underground, it is a no man's land. Okay, pun intended. Do you know any Dutch? I could not understand any spoken Dutch if spoken to me. I can't say anything in Dutch. However, if you write it down, I can actually understand quite a lot because there's so many similarities between Dutch and Deutsch or German that I actually can comprehend quite a bit. So that's my level. I feel like if I had like a month or two of just learning the basics of how Dutch sounds, I'd be in a much better place for actually understanding the language. I'd obviously still have to learn a lot. There are a lot of differences, but now I understand why people say once you learn one language, it's easier to learn others. There's a lot of similarities, similar to Spanish and French. Oh, this is a good one. What goals do you have this trip? Last time you learned to cook, etc. Have you got different ones? So this was actually a big stressor for me before I moved was I just kept comparing myself to Evan that moved to Munich. And I was like, man, he did all these things. If I ever even want to be anything like him, I need to try and come up with things. So I actually spent some time being like, I, I could pick up journaling. Um, I, I, I could be into doing this or that. And then I realized, what am I doing? Like, am I, am I just trying to repeat something that I felt like was really successful? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to make a new experience. I was just trying to repeat. That's the whole reason why I I'm here is to do something different not to just do the same thing I did in the past. And so I realized why focus so much on doing that same strategy of I need to pick up new things as opposed to my actual intent, get good at the things that I already am doing. So make sure I'm consistent despite the fact that I'm not in the same environment. So main reason really, I just wanna get really good at my German and get rid of a lot of negative habits rather than pick up any new ones. I'm pretty happy with the habits I've got. Next up, we have Qual fue tu inspiración para aprender alemán? What was your inspiration for learning German? I think I've said this in a video a really long time ago, but it felt like a language for me that I've chosen, as opposed to just, oh, well, school taught me Spanish, so I just kept that up. You know, I never had the option to learn German until I took a like really short semester course in university, which I just took as a bird course to boost my GPA because it's just a language. It's an elementary language. I figured easy A, boost the grades. And then I was like, oh, I really like this. I I've taken courses in like Spanish, French, Japanese, German. And I was like, oh, I like this one. You know what? I'm going to pursue this because I think it's interesting. That was pretty much it. There was something about it that was interesting to me. Also the fact that my last name specifically is of Germanic origin. So I was like, oh, you know, there's a little calling there. Why not? Then we have, what do you actually do for work and income? I see you do one to two vids a week. Is that it? I mean, yes, my full-time job is this. I make YouTube videos. This is my living. Uh, that means, luckily, I'm very privileged in the fact that I can just do this from anywhere. So it's not like when I'm in Berlin, I'm just not working, not making any income for a month, then I come back into it and I'm just on holiday. I am actually making things. I'm doing huge amounts of research just because I enjoy this, by the way. I'm not saying like, oh, me, you got a lot of work to do. I like this. That's why I do this. So yes, th this is my job. I do put a lot of my heart into it. I have been making YouTube videos for like 10, 11 years. So like 
I've been very consistent with this. This is just something I've always enjoyed doing. It does afford me to pay the bills. Hurrah. How's your Spanish? I'd probably put it around B1. So definitely about where I was in German five years ago when I moved to Munich initially. What's your favorite item from the German bakery? You know, I, I did say I didn't have any goals on this trip, but I did start one after my first week here, which was try every item at the bakery. Not possible. There's too many different items and they're all so freaking good. But my favorite item most definitely is a Laugen Eck. I'll explain that one a bit more in my pros and cons of living in Berlin video coming out a bit, but it is like if a croissant tasted like a pretzel. It's perfect. Are you planning on going clubbing in Berlin? Actually, yes. By the time you're watching this, hopefully I would have been let in to the Berghain. We shall see. I've got my friend Anne is hopefully going to be bringing me and Heather there and we'll get in. Hopefully. I, I'm a good British man. I know how to queue, so... We'll see. Otherwise, I'm really not that big of a clubbing guy. Usually they just play club music that I find really bad. The lineup for Bergheim though, when I'm supposed to be going, looks pretty good. Mega, according to Anne. Would you ever move back to America? No, like pretty much no. When I think about it, there's a lot of things I miss about my hometown and my home area. But the one thing that I absolutely could never go back to is being car dependent. Like living in a place where I have to use a car to do anything to get food, to visit friends, to leave my house. Needing a car to do things is pretty much like a nightmare for me in my mind right now. I'm so much happier to live in a society where that's not a thing. Because personally, I feel like living in a car dependent area is just really more likely to make you so lonely. It's not as easy to just go out and see someone. You have to get in your car, usually alone, to then go a distance to, there's no like walking, seeing things. It's just driving on ugly ass pavement. And I, I just not, no. Plus, I mean, there's a whole can of worms about like, I wouldn't want to raise a family there. The cost of living there in terms of like having to worry about healthcare bills, pretty much healthcare things. Uh, wouldn't necessarily feel safe having my child in a school there. Like there, there's just other reasons that I just wouldn't want that. And you could say, Evan, there are cities in America that have public transit very, very few, and I wouldn't necessarily want to uproot my life again to go there specifically, and that they've got their own can of worms. So why Berlin and not other cities? Well, I've already lived in Munich, and as I said, I don't want to just repeat that same thing. I was strongly considering doing that to get my German back because I really loved Munich, but then I was thinking, I really want to experience something new. I want to learn more about a completely different city, and I'm not just here going to school and staying in my room. I'm going out exploring. I'm reading everything I can. I'm learning about the people here, the culture of this city, and what makes it its, you know, vibrant city. So I chose Berlin specifically because I've been here once or twice, and I thought it was really nice. It's the capital of Germany, and I've got a friend here. So I figured that's actually quite a nice bit of a combo. I was considering Vienna, but in the end, I was just like, ah, I'll choose Berlin for now. Maybe I'll do Vienna at some point in the future. Who knows? All right, YouTube comments. What do we got here? Well, I live in Vienna now. Ho ho. How did you make the hurdle from B1 to B2? I have no bloody idea. I just think it was from constant exposure. So I was reading a lot. I was also using sources like uh, DW.com, uh, which is run by the German government and it's lots of free resources to learning German. They have lots of things like Nico Sveg on there. They've got Harry Volkot's Gefangen in der Zeit. They have a couple other like B2 series where you watch a show that teaches you German when you're more advanced and you need a bit more than guten tag. So I'd say that's a good option. Kudos for talking so much about cooking healthy and good mental health without segueing into BetterHelp and a HelloFresh sponsor spot. So in regards to this comment, which I'm going to answer uh, fully, reason being one, some videos I do specifically reserve uh, like when I'm planning things out my notion with no spawn. As in, I feel like I don't want to have a sponsor for a specific video unless like I have lots of contractual obligations and I'm like, okay, I've got to do that. But there are some where I'm like, I'd rather this one be completely pure. <laughs> in a way. However, in terms of these specific brands, HelloFresh is really great. I've used them quite regularly in the past. And whenever they reach out to sponsor me, I'm like, cool, that's a good product. That's fine. I have nothing against them. Uh, with BetterHelp, they've reached out to me many, many, many times in the last five years. And I've literally always said no. And I always see YouTubers I look up to and they also are sponsored by them. And I'm always like, ah. to me, it's, it's a bit of a gray area. And I also don't really like the idea of YouTubers kind of looking for a way to be like, mm, guys, I've been a bit sad recently. Thanks to this company that you can give your money to. So there's there's this weird thing where I'm like, ah, I'm sure it's fine, 
but I have this weird line that is just my own and I'm sure that it's acceptable, but I don't know. I've got a line in the sand and I probably won't work with them. That's just me. Now I've gotten a couple comments that are like this. I lived in Berlin for three years and learned almost no German. Everything was in English. So I'm also aware that Berlin speaks more English than any other German city. Like there's so much English spoken in the city. And I was aware of that before I chose here. The original reason I chose Munich was because I had an interest. I'd already been there once and because I knew a lot of German is spoken there. A little bit of Irish, but hey, that's dialect and it's beautiful. However, Berlin, I was a bit concerned. Mm, am I actually going to get to use my German? My first day here, I heard so much English. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I went to the cafe. I heard the most American accents ever behind the bar. And they were like, hi, like, what type of coffee do you want? And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Scheiße. However, uh, everything ended up turning out being fine. I just didn't go to really touristy cafes. And from every bakery experience, from every shop I've gone in, I've only used German to talk to people, to buy things, to do pretty much everything. Not any English at all, unless there's some sort of error. So despite the fact that they do speak a lot of English here, you can still use your German. And for the most part, if uh, even if someone switches to speak English when they hear that I'm having trouble with a certain word, I carry on speaking German, okay? <laughs> I'm not here to learn English. Next up, we have, don't know if this helps or not, but past Evan gave me the motivation to move to the UK and back and relearn Spanish and introduce me to people like Dodi, Corey, and Noah. Present Evan inspires me to get my life together and finally, maybe get a home and fine and... It does say, and fine. I was speaking so fast. Get a home and fine and partner. I hope I don't get a fine. <laughs> and partner and be serious about my art again. It's kind of cool to grow up alongside people online. Do you have a relationship like that with anyone you follow online? You've gotten to follow their journeys and draw from them. Interestingly, I've watched a lot of YouTubers for a really long time and YouTubers will come and go. Either they stop making YouTube videos for this reason or that. Um, but the only one that I, I kind of was like, I maybe kind of inspiring in that way would be Casey Neistat, someone who was very much like, at top of his game, huge New Yorker guy. And then for, you know, his personal reasons, which were very valid, he moved to California. And that lasted for a bit until he just realized like, New York really was his home. Like that's just, that's where he was happiest. That's where life is for him. And so he moved back. And so that was like one creative decision that I watched from the sidelines. And I was like, damn, man, I, I respect that. Like to make such a huge, decision that affects your entire life and your family's entire life, obviously with the family involved and then make it public and then have to change that twice. I find that it, it, it is scary, man. Like being online and doing any decision, people will be like, Evan, why is your hair like that? I can't imagine being like, Evan, why did you move to California? So yeah, that, that that's what uh, there's been a couple comments that are very similar to this, which I was very well expecting. And that is, oh my God, I thought for a while it was a permanent move. I was thinking about the lovely flat you had and why you'd want to leave it. I'll allow you a month in Germany as long as you come back to the UK. There were others as well said not necessarily as nicely, but like, this isn't really a move. This is just a bit of holiday. And I do understand where you're coming from. I have a counter example, possibly. When I lived in Liverpool for only a month, I'm wondering if people do not consider me living there for a month. All of my stuff at that point was in storage. I had nowhere else to live and I was living in Liverpool for a month. I had all the belongings that I needed and I was living, working there. That was my home. I wasn't just, you know, there for a bit. I was there for a full month and my entire goal was to live, not to just holiday, if that makes any sense. When I moved to Munich, I did the same thing. I took all of my things that I needed, that I wanted with me, and I lived there. I bought groceries there. For me, there's a difference between like living in a place and traveling. And I think it, you could disagree. I genuinely think it has to do with your intention. And if I'm going to like New Zealand for a month, but I'm just spending the whole time driving all around, seeing all the sites, doing these touristy things, well then, yeah, I'm not necessarily living there, am I? I'm just traveling. But if I live in one specific point, one like city, and that's where I'm living for a month and I try and participate in society, I don't know. For me, I consider that moving and living. And I will consider this a place that I've lived for a month. That's just me. You can disagree. I'd love to hear your comments as long as they're not mean. <laughs> oh, another one that there were quite a few comments similar was the time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. Bertrand Russell with basically comments saying, 
eh, I'm a bit too hard on myself and if I'm enjoying myself and I'm not being productive, that's not wasted time. I very much understand. I think there's another comment that was very similar, which basically said, must be so exhausting feeling the need to be productive all the time. No, not really. That's just how my brain is. I really like doing things and I really like making things. And yes, I do enjoy relaxing and playing video games from time to time. And I grew up living on RuneScape, man. I would play that for hours and I loved it. And then there was like a switch that clicked after I hadn't played through a long period of time in high school. And then I was living at home and I had work at the old Pizza Hut. And I remember I had a day off and I went, you know what I haven't done in a while? Play RuneScape. That'll be so fun. So I opened up the laptop. I started playing RuneScape. Eight hours later, I then was like, oh my God, this whole day is gone. And it wasn't like I didn't enjoy myself. I loved it. I freaking loved it. And the game is like beautiful to my mind. I, I saw a picture of it on Reddit the other day and it, it made my heart go, oh, wow. I loved that. I love that game and I love that experience. But it's such an addictive game that it's almost like a drug in that it takes, like you enjoy it, but you could be enjoying other parts of life that you can be contributing a bit more to society to, which you could say isn't, you don't need to. What's wrong with playing? That's fair. But for me, I want to do more, if that makes sense. And I have no uh, judgment on people that do not, but for me, I really, really, really like have a drive to create, to make things, to learn things and to improve and be productive just for my own being, just for all the goals that I have set for myself that I like. So that is why when I, I do play video games and stuff, I actually set myself a portion of rules like, okay, you have like an hour or two this evening, have a nice time. Sometimes I'll go off the deep end, play like four or five hours. I got really addicted to Horizon Forbidden West and to Elden Ring at, at some times. But for the most part, I, I just like to make sure, I don't know, I, I feel like in my mind, I'm functioning the best that I can and I'm using it to relax, but I'm not just doing that, you know? I feel like too much of anything is unhealthy and too much relaxing can be unhealthy for me. Okay, hope that answered the question. I think I actually worded that really well compared to what I was thinking I was gonna do. I'm gonna close the door. What's German hip hop like? Okay, I'm really bad with naming music genres. I honestly do not know how to signify. There's just too many genres these days. I like a song and I'm like, you know the one that's like beep boop bop a boop? It's not just electronic. There's too many different genres out there. So no, it's probably not really hip hop. It's more like pop, but like, new age alternative pop. I have no idea, especially because it's in a different language. I like bands such as 01099, which is not how you would say it in German, obviously. I like Crow, uh, Alligatoa, Alligatoa is uh, pretty good. I'll put a playlist of songs that I like in the description. A lot of them are just gonna be albums. I'm an album guy. So when I like a certain song, I'll listen to an album and be like, oh yes, this whole album is very good. So yeah, I'm not good for playlists at parties because I'll just be like, the next one is also by the same band for the next, 45 minutes. So I got a few questions like this one that says, is finding places to stay short term in another country difficult? I wouldn't even know where to begin. Another one that said, that's cool, but how did you get a place in Berlin? You know that wherever you are from, there is a website for looking at rentals, not necessarily fully long term, but also Zwischenmiete or short term type of things where someone's out of the country for like a month or two, they want someone to stay over, or possibly they do offer longer terms, but there's shorter ones as well. In England, most people would use spare room. That's the one that I've used before when I was in between houses. So I was looking for a German equivalent way back when I moved to Munich and I found this website called WG Gesucht. And it's for just basically one of your flatmates might be going on holiday for a month and you wanna make sure that you're paying the rent fully. You can get someone in the place for that period. That's what I did in Munich. This time it was a friend of a friend, so. That's how. Also, at some point, I joined a Berlin WhatsApp group that's so full that no one else can join it. And it's full of people looking for flats because it's so difficult to find a flat in Berlin right now that everyone's desperate and will form 5,000 participant large WhatsApp groups like it's bloody Glasto. How is this affecting your relationship? Long distance relationships are difficult. May I've had a long distance relationship for two years. She doesn't live in London. She's one of those folk that live on the outskirts. Not even outskirts. It's a different bloody borough. Or it's not even a borough. It's a different county. <laughs> so it's always been long distance. Now it's just a bit longer. Heather's coming to visit for the next uh, couple days and then we'll be able to hang out, go to the clubs and stuff. So I think we're in such a good uh, relationship in terms of communication that nothing like this would really have too much of an effect. We talk almost every other night and I consider our relationship very healthy. So that's how. Would love an all German video again, perhaps soon. Actually, I do have one planned. What before I went on this trip, I was like, I'm not gonna do it. There's no way I can. I don't, I'm too embarrassed to tell people I can't do that. However, just by being here for a week or two, I'm like, oh my God, my brain started thinking German again, daydreaming in German again. 
I actually started scripting a video in German, so I'm gonna be making that. There'll be English subtitles, so if you'd like to watch and you do not understand German, hopefully you do, because it's gonna be full of fun, embarrassing stories of my time in Berlin. I've done some stupid things already and it's only been two weeks. <laughs> What's your go-to opener when you want to start a conversation with someone in German? Uh, ich möchte die Laugenecke, bitte? <laughs> now I do have a couple questions that are very similar, which say, I desperately want to get out of the US, but I have no idea how to. And also as an American, what are some tips for moving to another country? So without having any goal in mind, except to leave, it's gonna be very difficult for you to do much of anything. You really have to find something specific that you really want and that drives you. So if you really do not like the place in which you're living, regardless of where you are, just set yourself a goal. Just be like, I don't wanna be anywhere. For me, I just happened to choose England because that's where my life kind of took me when I chose to go to university there for my master's. That's just kind of what happened. If you want to move to England specifically, do your research, find visa jobs, look up videos on that. I have a specific video on how to move to England. So if you want to move to England slash the UK, that video is useful. Otherwise, you just have to do a lot of research and really commit to it. It can't be something that you're just like, oh, I wish. If you just wish, you'll never have it happen. You have to commit to doing little bits to figure out how to make that wish a reality. What is the best advice you can give to someone trying to change their lifestyle that can't just move? If you've never read the book, Atomic Habits, I think it's really, really good. I've read it twice. I'd read it again. It's just full of really, really useful practical tips on how to do little tiny changes that will actually enable you to change your lifestyle habits for the better. So I just would recommend reading this book. It's really, really good. Evan, I don't like books. Well, there's a lot of stuff hidden behind these books, a lot of knowledge that's really useful. I find self-help books really good, and that one is like one of the best I've read. So it gets a genuine non like paid influencer recommendation from me. This is a really funny one. We'll end on, why do you have British citizenship if you're not loyal to Britain? I'm sorry. I can't imagine any like actual British person seeing this comment and thinking it's an actual British person. Like this sounds like someone pretending. <laughs> why not loyal to Britain? I feel like British culture is taking the piss out of this type of thought process. Am I right, folks? Didn't you sing to the Queen? <laughs> you should be bloody loyal to the royals. That's right. I'm not answering it because I think the question is silly. Anywho, thanks for watching this little chill little personal video where we're talking about some Q&A. Throwing it back to old Evan style. There weren't as many puns as there probably should be and as Tutmir lied. All right, as Tutmir light? That, that's the best you're gonna get. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a new video out next Sunday unless something disastrous happens to me because I have not missed one in 10 years. If you're interested in seeing what my day-to-day -day has been like since I've moved to Germany, on my second channel, I have some vlogs there. A lot of people are like, you have a second channel? I know, I do. I don't upload regularly, but I am right now. Hopefully, I'll get those videos up by the time you're watching this. So click that if you want. Otherwise, I will see you guys on the next one. Tschüssi. Ugh. <laughs>